Let us quickly review some of the concepts that we have discussed in this session. We can access the data entry application by going to Apps and then finding our data entry app. In order to start the data entry process, we need to select an organization unit, dataset, and period. We can select an organization unit by either expanding the tree on the left-hand side or by finding the organization unit that we are looking for. With the organization unit highlighted in orange and selected in the organization unit dimension of our data entry screen, we can then select the data set. After we select the data set, we select the period. This will then load the data set for us to enter our data. We can navigate in the data set using either tab or enter to move downward or forward. We can also use shift and tab to move backward and upward. If we double click on one of the data values, we can see the history of that particular data element. We can also add a comment and add a minimum and maximum limit. Here we can also review the audit trail in a separate tab. The audit trail shows us any changes to that particular data element value, as well as the person who made those changes. In data entry, we also have input validation. This ensures that the data we are entering meets the criteria we have specified when we selected our value type during the creation of the data element within the data element maintenance application. We also have mathematical validation rules. These can be run either at the top or the bottom of our data entry page. These identify potential errors of our data that's been entered into DHIS2. These are user-defined and their creation will be discussed more in the Information Use Academy. Next to Run Validation, we have the Incomplete and Complete buttons. These buttons contribute to our reporting rate completeness in our various analysis applications. Lastly, we can enter data offline using the Web Data Entry application. If we lose our internet connection and we enter a data value, it will save it locally to our browser cache. When our connection gets restored, we will have a prompt indicating there is data stored locally. We can upload this data and then it will synchronize back with the main server. This ends this demonstration on the Data Entry Web Application. In the next session, we'll demonstrate the use of the Android Data Entry Application. Let us know if you have questions about any of the features that we've demonstrated during this particular demonstration.